Hey guys, I'm Jeanette. And I'm Joanna. Welcome to our family kitchen. Today we're gonna teach you how to make our family restaurant's famous chili chicken. So as we know, I'm not really the chef at our family restaurant, so Joe's going to teach us how to make all this stuff today. So first, we have our chicken thighs. That's what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna have Spanish onion, a little bit of Thai green chilies to add a little bit of heat. We have our chili garlic sauce, oyster sauce, Shaoxing cooking wine, and also a light soya sauce. And we're gonna deep fry it because nothing tastes better than deep fried stuff. And we're gonna use potato starch with that. If people want to use uh, boneless chicken thighs, would that cook the same as what we're doing now? Yeah, they definitely can. With bone, it's gonna take a lot, uh, not a lot longer, it'll take a couple of more minutes longer. Bones always give like a really good flavor, so if you can purchase it with bones, then I would do so. So we're gonna cut it up into like uh, bite-sized pieces, not too large. Put one here, and then we're gonna separate it from the bone over here. So just be gentle with it. So all uniform pieces. So you're gonna need about a, uh, just about a, a soup pot over here and about one liter of cooking oil. So we're using canola oil because it has a higher smoke point. If you have grapeseed oil, that's really, really good as well too. Uh, you're gonna have your stock pot over here. Make sure it's dry. So I left it on the stove top for about two minutes to make sure that there isn't any residual water because if you put in oil and you mix it with water, it's gonna splat, 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 and then you're gonna get all these nasty burn marks that I have. And then we're just gonna pour it in. You're gonna put your heat on high. Make sure you don't leave the kitchen because you don't wanna burn anything. So we'll let that heat up for about 10 minutes and I will show you guys a trick to let you know that the oil is ready. Next part, we're gonna get the Spanish onions ready. And I have here ready for us a uh, Spanish onion. So once this gets all diced up, you need about half a cup of it. Or if it's a large Spanish onion, you'll need about one quarter of it. So you have your lines of your onion going down this way. So that's vertical. So we're gonna go across it. So we're gonna cut horizontally from the lines of the onion. We're gonna dice it. Ideally, if you had half the onion, it's much easier, but uh, we don't need the whole thing. So your whole onion's intact. You pinch towards the side over here so it doesn't move. Uh, you do your claw hand and then you just push it, uh, you put your thumb behind and now we're just gonna cut. So your first cut should kind of go um, at a 35 degree angle just so that it's more uniform. Who taught you how to cut? Dad taught me how to cut. Oh, was it scaring when you were teaching? Yeah. Oh, Jeanette, you can cut the Thai green chilies. Sure. So Thai green chilies are optional, but if you don't want extra heat, you don't have to add it on. We're gonna have a little bit of ginger puree. So uh, mom actually made this for me. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy ginger puree yourself, but we use so much at home anyway. So we make a big batch, uh, we grind it up in the food processor, and then after you add some oil on top. Mm. And then whenever you need it, it's always there. Mom didn't make me any ginger puree. I know. But she knows you're not gonna use it. I cook at home! <laughs> so we know who's the favorite, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we have about, uh, about half a teaspoon of a pureed ginger. So we're gonna saute this together afterwards in the wok. Uh, let's see if our oil is ready. So we're starting to see some bubbles right now. You can always tell though by just taking a wooden spoon. So wooden spoons, uh, naturally wood has moisture in it already. So we're gonna put the end of the spoon inside. And then if you see a lot of bubbles forming around it, that means it's ready. How about you make our sauce? Sure. Okay. So you're gonna need two tablespoons of chili garlic sauce. Uh, one teaspoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of light soy sauce, and then piece de resistance. We're gonna do one tablespoon uh, and a little bit more. This is an Indonesian uh, soy sauce and it's really thick. It's delicious, but it's basically like foamy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So foamy is like a reduced soy sauce with tons of sugar and Hakka people use that a lot in our noodles. Okay, so that uh, sauce is a little bit thick because of the soy sauce. So we're gonna thin it down a little bit with chicken stock. Well, oops. <laughs> I was trying to cover it. Well, whatever, you can put in like two teaspoons of it. Over here in a steel bowl, we have potato starch, and potato starch is uh, used for uh, Japanese cooking as well too. So karage, which is a deep fried chicken thigh, it's delicious. And that's what we use to batter our chicken as well too. So we're just gonna dr uh, dredge it in here. So you're just gonna put each piece in. 
You don't want to do too much at once because we don't want to overcrowd our pot. So the temperature is really high right now. So we're just going to turn it down a little bit because it's probably going to splatter. So let's just put on your lowest setting. We're going to let that fry and it's going to take about a minute and a half for the pieces that we have over here. So as soon as it floats to the top, it's ready because we're going to be double frying them. Because double frying makes it extra crispy. So it's floating to the top, it's ready. it to the side to drain and let it cool for about uh, five minutes or so and then we're gonna fry it again uh, when it's completely done it should be at 165 degrees Fahrenheit and we checked it with our thermometer so it's good to go um, but really if you guys double fry it it should be fine and if it falls to the top you're okay all right so chicken thighs are ready and we can start cooking so we're just gonna take about two tablespoons of oil. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it into this pan over here. Okay. It's already been preheated. Yeah, just the onions first. So put it in. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. We're just gonna let the onions sweat. We're gonna put in the ginger and the Thai chilies. Okay. And uh, we also have garlic in there as well too. Ginger, Thai chilies, and garlic. Got it. So at the restaurant, we can get wok hay, which is the wok of the breath, and get that smoky aroma. Mm -hmm. You can't get that at home, oh, but it can still taste really, really good. You just won't get the aroma from it. So this is as close to the real thing as you're going to get if you cook it from home. Yeah, this is what we do at home. Yeah. And nothing is better than home cooking. Right, you want to put in the Shaoxing cooking wines first. So we're going to deglaze it. Whole thing? Mm -hmm. Whole thing. This is two teaspoons. Okay, and that mixture, just give it a good swirl. Put all of it in. Yep. And then we're just gonna let it reduce. So this is our restaurant's most popular dish. So it's trying to sizzle, so we'll put it in. Serve. Well, I guess pre-pandemic we were doing about how much? How many pounds? Oh, 200 God. pounds a day. Yeah, that's what Dad said, right? Yeah, at least 200 pounds of chicken a day. And when we were really busy, um, we were doing way more than 200 pounds a day. Yeah, we were. So when Dad taught you this, um, I think, yeah. the first time? Yeah, I had to keep on cooking it until he let me serve it to people. It was bad. One time I sent one out to a customer that was burnt, like really early, and I told them it was supposed to taste like that, because that was more okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just really burnt. Dad okay. is a real perfectionist. Yeah, he like, is. He will go over a recipe 600 times um, just to make sure it's right. And in our kitchen, we will not let a food get, like a dish get past him, especially the chili chicken, um, and let it go to a table if he hasn't tasted it, it and tried it, and make sure that it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And but now you do that at the kitchen. Like now that's your. Yeah, that's what I do. Now for the best part, mm, we, we get, get to eat it. Take a small piece, Jeanette, be ladylike, whatever. So a very easy recipe for you guys to make at home. Uh, if you enjoyed it, and you made it at home, please tag us and subscribe to our videos. And like it. Enjoy.